So here's the DAC Magic. Here's just the front of it. Not much to see, a little picture of it, but the actual module itself is actually quite a bit smaller. On the back, you've got some descriptions. It's a very small, plain box with not much to see from the outside. Um, and what you get on the inside, um, well, you get another box inside, a box inside a box. What do you get inside the box? You get a quick start guide. You get a, a little pouch to store your DAC Magic in. You get a thank you card. You get a very short USB cable, which is great for um, laptops and for portability, but it's not very useful for like desktop users because it's seriously small. And the unit itself is here, which again is very small. Like I said, it's very good for um, traveling because it's small and you can keep it close to your laptop. But if you are a desktop user, then this cable is way too short because you have your controls here. So if you've got it plugged into the back of a computer or anywhere else, like you won't be able to reach your volume buttons easily. So you probably need a longer USB cable. Um, so yeah, not sure. It could be a plus point or it could be a bad point. But that's all the contents that you get. The unit itself is here, very small. You've got two volume buttons, which also acts as, um, you can change the uh, settings on it, but I'll get to that in, in a bit later. You've got the USB connection at the back here and your headphone jacks, a three and a half millimeter connection at the front uh, with a little LED light that blinks depending on which mode it's in. So yeah, basically the module itself is very small and not much to it. But what we've got to do is uh, bring up the um, audio sound uh, menu on the Mac, since that's what I'm using, and go on to the output. And as we can see, it says, here it is, the DAC Magic XS1. My brain just went blank then. And as soon as I selected it, um, the light went green on the little uh, DAC Magic. But as you can see, it says it's on uh, 1.0, the class, and it only limits it to a certain bit rate. But apparently you can change it by, if you hold down the two but volume up and down button together, and it should change it. But I'm just gonna quickly try out and see what happens. So I'm holding it down, I'm waiting. Oh, there you go, it disappeared. And now it says there's 2.0. So now it has the maximum uh, set, um, bit rate that it lets me select. So what I'm gonna do is click on that and the little LED is turned purple pink now. So now that's selected. So we can quit that, but we also want to go to audio MIDI, MIDI setup there we go as you can see it's been selected here and the current format is at 24 bit two channel 48 hertz kilohertz but if we click here we can go up to the maximum of 192 kilohertz at 24 bit great that's it done in theory it should work now Hi guys, I just want to quickly apologize that the next section of the video is going to be slightly out of focus. I was rushing and I didn't check the footage properly till afterwards to realize it wasn't actually in focus. So yeah, I just want to apologize for that. So now that I've listened to it for a few days, what do I think of the DAC Magic Excess? Um, one main thing that I do think of is it's very loud. It's got like 53 or 54 steps of volume control from the minimum to the maximum. And somewhere around 35, I think I measured it, like not measured it, but I counted by clicking from mute till um, clicking all the way up. I clicked about 35 times before I felt it was seriously loud enough for my Sennheiser momentums. Like I didn't go all the way up, but when I checked the manual, it did say the maximum is like 54 clicks, I believe. So yeah, around 30 to 35, I feel like it's already loud enough. So what this little DAC as well as headphone amplifier does well is it's very loud i'll give it that it's very loud because sometimes on laptops especially like the volumes can be quite quiet even if you set it all the way up so it's got a lot of volume um what how does it sound like it sounds good it does sound very good like the sound is very clean or um, not a lot of bass there is bass it's clean and the mid range is good as well it's like it's a nice sound but but here's a but i feel like there's some detail lost at the higher frequency, the treble. It's uh, not as clear as my other amplifier that I've got. And the mid-range is a little bit bright, as I often find with Cambridge Audio um, stuff. Like, the mid-range is a bit too harsh for my personal liking. But overall, the sound is very good. 
If the audio from your laptop doesn't sound very good, like I've tried before, like on an Acer or Asus laptop, I've plugged in my normal um, in-ear Sennheiser headphones and I've played it through this particular laptop. And the audio sounded so bad that I thought my headphones were broken. And then I realized, hell a minute, it might be actually the laptop's output that is actually causing the terrible sound. So I tried the same headphones in, on my iPhone and it sounded great like I what I expected to be because I know these pair of headphones, these um, CX400 Precision Sennheiser in-ear headphones. I've had them for a long time so I pretty much know what they sounded like. But when I plugged it into this particular laptop, it sounded dreadful and I thought my headphones were actually broken. So if that's the case with your laptop or computer or an onboard sound card, this does make it sound very good. It gives you a lot of volume, it's very clear, but like I said, personally I find the mid range and high a bit too... The mid, it was a bit too bright, the high was a bit muffled in comparison. Um, so, but if your, if your audio on your system currently is really terrible, then this is actually a very good upgrade. And it's, it's great because it's not too expensive, about £100. It's tiny. So you can take it around with you if you're like a traveling or if you use a laptop a lot so it doesn't take up any room at all it is great and you've got the volume control straight away and you've got the led here which tells you the status and everything it's just a very nice design and package and something so small um, but just for comparison's sake i actually tried plugging in my headphones into my imax um, onboard headphone out jack thing i've never tried it before actually because i've always used my external DAC and amplifier to play my audio through my iMac, but just for this particular test, you know, just for the sake of comparing this to an onboard sound, the iMac actually sounds very similar to this. So I don't know if you if you can say that this is terrible or they're both equally as good, but I did find, like I said, on the iMac in particular, the audio is very similar and to some and in some aspects it's actually slightly clearer on the higher end. The bass and everything else sounded similar. Or the other way to, to, what I'm trying to say is, I didn't find a huge difference between this compared to the iMac audio. So it might not be such an upgrade if your sound is fine, but you wouldn't know till you try it. But what I can say is in my particular case, I didn't find any major improvements in the audio on my iPhone, just for comparison's sake, or my iMac. So I'm afraid, personally, I might have to return this because yeah, there wasn't much gain for me. But like I said, if you have a laptop which sounds bad and I have tried one, I have tried some laptops with terrible audio, this is definitely an improvement. So yeah, that's what I've got to say for this. Unfortunately for me, I didn't really like it. So I'm going to have to return it. Sorry. Anyway, that was my quick review of the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic XS. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.